And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit it testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus Christ to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God, if only I may finish my course and my ministry. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are now uh, dealing with uh, uh, preaching of uh, Paul to the elders of Ephesian church, the church in Ephesus. By way of his coming back to Jerusalem uh, as he finished his uh, the third mission trip. Uh, he was in a hurry to get to Jerusalem before the Pentecost, so he couldn't uh, spend his time uh, as he uh, uh, planned to uh, visit the Ephesus. Instead, he uh, planned to uh, get to Miletus, where uh, the elders of Epi uh, the church Ephesus uh, be gathered, uh, waiting for Paul there. And he is preaching. So his preaching be divided into four parts. And uh, I am preaching uh, upon this in the uh, second part today. Brothers and sisters, now we find that uh, Paul was uh, running to uh, the uh, uh, Jerusalem going back. And uh, he uh, is now speaking to uh, the church of Ephesus about his uh, you know, running. Because uh, he said that, I do not know what will wait for me there in Jerusalem. Uh, but uh, still the Holy Spirit uh, spoke to him. Uh, each city he was visiting in his mission trip that imprisonment and afflictions await for Paul. So he had no idea what's happening, but he also had the idea of the afflictions and imprisonment by the Holy Spirit. So he had two minds, two mind. one, in, one is not knowing, uh, but the other one is very clear understood, uh, understanding by the Holy Spirit, especially about his uh, persecutions imprisonment and afflictions. Brothers and sisters, this is the way that uh, all we are uh, confessing that uh, the path we are walking, not is de uh, depending upon ourselves, our plans. We have no idea. We have no power, no strength, no wisdom to control the path we are walking. Only it is the God. God and through Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit guiding us. So, Holy Spirit empowering upon us, possessing us, so that uh, drive us to the path that we are supposed to walk. For Paul, it was Jerusalem. Uh, uh, there used to be, uh, uh, for him, endangered there. So, very fearful place he are going back to. But uh, he had many reasons to go back. Number one, uh, he had the offerings collected from the churches, especially the Macedonian uh, the church uh, area churches. Uh, they uh, made donations uh, to uh, the church in uh, Jerusalem because they understood that uh, the saints, the Christians in uh, Jerusalem church were uh, under uh, uh, the serious drought and uh, uh, poverty, uh, starvation. So they were uh, supposed to uh, 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 supporting the church there in Jerusalem. 
So there are many uh, people, about some seven people uh, coming together with Paul. Uh, you know what? Each one represent each church, uh, holding, uh, carrying the offerings for the church uh, in Jerusalem. Number two, it was the destiny uh, that uh, he, destination that uh, he was heading. Each time, number one, number two, number three, mission trip, uh, he went back to Jerusalem before he going back to, uh, uh, you know, what, uh, uh, the Antiochus, the church in Antioch, uh, where uh, he was sent. So for Paul, Jerusalem was the final destination for his mission. Each time he finished his mission, he go there and report, and he share uh, the grace and the gifts and all the wonderful things that God provided him to the church people there who were uh, praying for him, supporting by the spiritual uh, uh, strength. Brothers and sisters, we are walking the path like the Paul, uh, uh, the mission and the ministry, but Holy Spirit is guiding. Especially, number three, we need to understand that the way that Paul was heading to Jerusalem was the following the path of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you know, uh, Jesus Christ in his ministry was finally heading to Jerusalem. And uh, it was the time of his uh, pers uh, persecution and the crucifixion. You know, in the, from the beginning of his ministry, he had in his mind about his time. Uh, when uh, uh, the Jesus' mother Mary came and they sa she said, they had, they had no wine anymore uh, in the Ghana, the banquet of the marriage. Jesus said, my time has not come. My time has not come. As we all know that, Jesus has in his mind about his time, which was the crucifixion of, uh, you know, upon the cross in Jerusalem. So when he was heading to Jerusalem, Jesus, he had his mind about the persecution, the crucifixion upon the cross which was kind of uh, the cup uh, of uh, the suffering when Jesus prayed uh, before the night of uh, his arrestment. He prayed that, Lord, Father God, if, please pass this away from me if it is possible. But your will be done. I, I want your will be done, not my will. Jesus prayed for that. So that cup of the suffering be the crucifixion. Like Paul, when ever since he was called by Lord Jesus Christ in Damascus, he had all the time Jesus Christ in his mind. So his ministry was the way of his denying himself as Jesus commanded. Anyone who comes after me, you need to deny yourselves and you carry your own crosses and follow me. The same thing happened to Paul each time he denied himself. Today, even he denied his life, thinking not that much precious. Uh, to live is together with Lord Jesus. To die is to gain. His, that is his attitude. So he laid his life down in, uh, for the cross, uh, cross, the walk of the path of the cross. It is the way that deny ourselves and carry the cross, which is the ministry. That Jesus said, you feed my lamb. So this is the way that he did all the best carrying the church, especially the Ephesian church. Uh, even if he was heading to Jerusalem in that, uh, in what, uh, in that hurry, uh, in haste, still he is taking care of the elders of the church there uh, in Miletus instead of uh, Ephesus, however. But still he is taken care of by his preaching this time. Brothers and sisters, yes, as we walk following the Lord Jesus Christ, imprisonment and afflictions are waiting for us, not only to Paul, but also to us. So we all need to be that courageous like Paul is now uh, possessed by the Holy Spirit. So we all need to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Living this world is like uh, passing through the wilderness like Israelite people. Same thing will happen to us as we are passing through the wilderness. We will find many imprisonments and afflictions. Still, we need to go following 
the Lord Jesus Christ. So, I had three uh, points why Paul is going back to Jerusalem, even though in danger, the, uh, you know, the danger and afflictions and imprisonment are waiting for him. Number one, each time he finished his mission trip, he went back to uh, Jerusalem, which was the, uh, the mother of the churches. Number two, uh, he had carrying uh, you know, the offerings of uh, the churches, especially Macedonian churches, uh, 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 to support the church in the church uh, people in uh, Jerusalem. Number three, he was following the Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus was heading to Jerusalem, he waited for his uh, final, uh, in what, the persecution, which was uh, the cup of the suffering, the crucifixion. So Paul had in his mind that that is the way that he finished his life, his ministry, his work of uh, the faith, be there in Jerusalem. As he, uh, he was imitating the Lord Jesus Christ. He said to the elders of Ephesus, the church in Ephesus, uh, in Miletus. Now I behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there. By, constrained by the Holy Spirit, not knowing means he's, he's uh, relying upon the Holy Spirit, Spirit everything. You know what, by human beings, as you know, if you do not know, then uh, you will not go there. Unless you have enough information, uh, for the safety especially, you will not head to that place. But Paul was different. Because of the projection of the Holy Spirit, he was heading, even though he does not know anything about the place, what happened to him. However, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city in his mission trip, every city he visited, he got the Holy Spirit the testimonies that imprisonment and afflictions are await, awaiting. So he, he, even though he did not know, but he knew by the Spirit that persecutions are waiting for that, They're waiting for uh, Paul and uh, his people. However, he had this very strong uh, testimony that, but I do not account my life of any value nor as precious to myself. We people think, my life is most precious. So that the people be, become very selfish at crucial moments. Each time when crucial moments come, people become very selfish. Because they think their life be most precious. But Paul is different. He does not consider his life be precious. If only I may finish my course and the ministry, that I received from the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of the, uh, uh, gospel of the grace of God. In order to testify the gospel of the grace of God, he laid down his life. This is an irony or a paradox, how we uh, lay down our lives in order to, in order to uh, testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Maybe you think that I need to live longer, more time, more days, so that I do uh, finish, uh, I do complete uh, the test, uh, you know, the, the mission is given by God. However, my uh, brothers and sisters, to, you know, to focus upon the mission, the life is to be laid down. This is an irony. As Jesus said, if you want to live, you will uh, you will die. But if you want to die, then you will live. This irony or paradox uh, uh, will uh, be uh, come true uh, as we, uh, you, you know, at the, uh, delivering the good news to uh, to the people. So, uh, Paul, uh, for example, Philippians chapter one, he was writing uh, in uh, the uh, uh, the prison of Rome, twenty twenty one. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be uh, at all ashamed, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. See, he had this secret of his life. 
To live is to die. To die is to gain. In Christ Jesus, this is to be understood. But outside of Christ, this is nonsense. But we do know how Jesus crucified himself in order to gain the life, as you know. He laid down his life for the sheep and he gained, he gained the life of the sheep. Do you understand this? As Jesus said, the good shepherd is laying down his life for the sheep. And that is the way. If uh, uh, you know, the, it is no good shepherd at all, only uh, working for money, the shepherd will not lay down uh, his life. But the, this is the way that we find, we sometimes understand that it is rather death that is to work than the life. We sometimes do the work of God by laying down our lives. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 says about Abel. Uh, Abel. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was uh, commanded as righteous, God commanding him by accepting his guilt. And uh, through his faith, though he died, he is still speaking. Though he died, he is still speaking. Brothers and sisters, let's think about the life of Abel. Uh, not many uh, writings about him, but the only one time worship service and uh, he de his death right after his sacrifice. Still, the Bible says, though he died, he still speaks. So by the death, he is speaking. Many Christians, by their sacrifice, by their crucifixion, by their death, they are still speaking. This is an irony that we find in uh, the ministry of uh, Jesus Christ. For example, Jesus Christ lived only three, 33 years, and his ministry time was not that long. According to uh, the you know, Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it was only one year ministry. Uh, John uh, uh, mentions three time Passover, so maybe three years. If Abel lived, longer and had many uh, like uh, children and uh, many uh, testimonies maybe that'd be great for his ministry but the Bible says not that so only by his death he is still speaking so Paul is taking care of this uh, in order to testify the gospel of God he lays down his life uh, thinking not that precious uh, his life Jesus Christ died, and by the death, all people come into life, right? By his death, we find our sins washed away, and we find our, the life of the flesh, and the life of uh, death, and life of the sin, die out together with the Lord Jesus Christ, right? By that, we all come to, come into life by the death of Lord Jesus Christ. How precious it is that Jesus died upon the cross. Same thing, there are many Christians, many Christian ministers and missionaries who died upon the cross, each one of us, given to each one. So that by that, they are still speaking. As we look at the history, the church history, we have many, many people still speaking to us, challenging us by their deaths, by their denying their, their lives and carrying their own crosses in the following the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 25 says, Paul is now speaking, and now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. He said, reflecting the past ministry that he did all the uh, best in delivering the kingdom of God. Now, you may not see my face again. What does that mean? My time is at the end of ministry. I am now at the time of my ministry. No more. But I do you know, uh, uh, ask you, my uh, brothers and sisters, to the Lord Jesus Christ 
and the word of God that we may find in the last part of his sermon. Now this time he says, we may not see any more by his faces. Actually, that happened to him. When he would come down to Jerusalem, he was imprisoned. And uh, he uh, was uh, supposed to go to Rome as a prisoner. And uh, he was put into a uh, Roman uh, prison after two years of a uh, uh, certain area uh, like uh, confined. But uh, he was uh, still teaching and preaching and he was writing the letters, especially the epistle to uh, Ephesians. But he didn't see Ephesian elders and the church members face to face. Still my point, my brothers and sisters, we now see how Paul is doing his all the best, even to the point of departure. And he said, 26, Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all. What does that mean? I am innocent of the blood of all. He preached the word of God by the Jesus Christ, who is the salvation. As you know, Jesus is the Son of God, the only Son of God. That John 3.16 says, God sent his one and only Son, Lord Jesus Christ, because he loved the world. And anyone who believed in Jesus will have eternal life instead of a perishment. He will not, they, they will not perish, but have eternal life. Yes, it is true. By that, Anyone who does not believe in Jesus will have no eternal life but perish, which is like a blood, die. So here Paul says, I am innocent to the blood of all. What does that mean? He did all the best. He delivered the word of God, leaving nothing behind him. He did all the best, and he said, I am satisfied about my ministry. This is a very important point. Brothers and sisters, this is the way that we see how Paul did all his best. Are you Christians? Are you ministers? Are you missionaries? Having this assurance about this? Are you innocent about any blood of, the, of any people? So this is the way that we do all the best to do this. Brothers and sisters, this is the way that uh, he, uh, you know, uh, Paul is uh, writing to uh, Timothy uh, for the last moment when he was in prison the second time. And he was writing the second Timothy. Chapter 4, verses 5 to 8. Now listen to him, what he's saying to the Timothy, his son and the Christ. As for you, always be sober-minded. Endure suffering. Do work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. The time of my, my departure means the death, yes. That time is come now. And I have fought the good fight, and I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And henceforth, there is the laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on the day. So he is now anticipate, anticipating, expecting that the crown of life will be awarded to him. But not only to him, but also to all have loved his appearing. So he is mentioning not only himself, but everybody, everyone who is doing this way, denying the lives of themselves, and uh, on carrying the cross and uh, do all the best, the ministry and the mission. And uh, like a poured, like a drink offering, means the last moment before leaving the fire of the sacrifice. That means the last moment of the ministry. He is mentioning to Timothy like this. So about the same sentiment we find in his preaching to the elders of the Ephesus in Miletus. He said, For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. He said, I did not shrink from declaring to you 
the whole counsel of God, the whole counsel of God, I completely delivered to you. That implies that it is the time of my departure from you. So the church in Ephesus is supposed to have the ministry without Paul from this time on. No Paul, no minister like Paul, but still they need to go. The next generation, the new ministers are supposed to come. And the new ministry will be done after Paul. But for Paul, he did all, all the best given to him, brothers and the sisters. Yes, we all are the same generation listening to this preaching, this word of God today. But we have the next generation to come, right? So we need to do all the best to share the good news to the next generation. Having this assurance that I have spoken to you everything about the grace of God. So I am innocent about the blood of anybody. This strong assurance of the ministry is very important. Yes, brothers and sisters, anybody believing in Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. We all need to go to the people. And as for Paul, he's making reflections upon his ministry in the Ephesus, especially the church in Ephesus. He stayed there about two or more, about three years he stayed. Uh, he was wandering. He was, you know, a uh, uh, wandering uh, evangelist, as you know and staying in one place over uh, about the three years. Very exceptional. Then much he loved the efficient church, and then much he did all the best in his ministry, and now he's reflecting the past that he did all the best. He laid down his life, and this is the last time that I will not see you anymore. And what he is now anticipating what to, what is supposed to come to him. He's going to Jerusalem, and uh, there, afflictions and imprisonments are awaiting for him. Uh, not knowing any details, but the Holy Spirit says that. But however, he had no hesitation, no fear at all, because of the possession of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, this is the way of our ministry. This is the way of Christians living. We be uh, commanded to be the salt and the light. We need to do all the best in the fulfillment, in the obedience to this commandment. Even to the strong assurance that I am innocent to any good, anyone who does not come to believe in Lord Jesus Christ may not be saved, but I spoke to everyone, each one. Did you have this strong assurance about your ministry? If you are so, you are blessed. I hope you, everyone, have the same mind as Paul. If it's the time, if it's the case, you are ready to lay down your life. Uh, you, you, you may not think your life will be that much precious. Brothers and sisters, Jeremiah chapter 10, 23 is, uh, you know, I demand all this, as we have uh, Paul. And Jeremiah said, here, I know, O oh Lord, that the way of man is not in himself, that it is not a man who walks to direct his steps. As we walk step by step, it is not my way. Brothers and sisters, it is not my way, but his way. He is guiding. Jesus Christ is guiding, directing us each path, walking together with us. Amen. To conclude my sermon, yes, Paul was possessed by the Holy Spirit. And uh, he did all the best in his ministry there in Ephesus. So he was innocent uh, for any blood uh, coming, not believing the Lord Jesus Christ. So he did all the best. He made assurance of each people, each person. Come on, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Up to the point of his laying down his life. Running the risk of his losing his life, he preached, he taught, and uh, he cared with a compassion, with the mind of Lord Jesus Christ. As we come back 
to Jerusalem. He is now sharing this to the elders of Ephesians, who are supposed to be the next generation ministers. So now in the following the session of uh, the preaching, we find this, how Paul is encouraging uh, the elders of uh, the Ephesian church in Miletus, how they, take, how they need to take care of the sheep, the congregation. In the same heart of Paul, actually coming from Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, yes, all the way of my life, all the way of my uh, course to walk, Jesus is together with me. As I told you before, the way going back to Jerusalem was imitating the Lord Jesus Christ, following the Jesus Christ. Jesus was heading to, according to Luke, especially Jerusalem, anticipating the final course of his ministry, which was crucifixion. We all are heading to that path, brothers and sisters. If not, we are escaping from the ministry, from the calling. But we all are supposed to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Even though we are not that much sure about what will happen, maybe afflictions, maybe imprisonment, still we are heading following our Lord Jesus Christ. Dojo. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your loving us this much. And we are happy that we do all the best in teaching and preaching the Word of God. About Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of the gospel to each people here and there. Now in the Bay Area, San Francisco, we do all the best preaching, teaching. And we will go to Jerusalem. Maybe in prison and was sent to Rome, and there uh, he will die there. Paul, Paul's case. We don't know where you are guided and leading us, but let us do all the best here in the ministry, laying down our lives, thinking our lives not that much precious, pouring ourselves like a drink offering up to the sacrifice, waiting for the fire, living. Jesus' name.